Power Rangers Mighty Morphing in one week. Huge graphical and performance upgrades coming soon. And Pyromane and the big concerns its spells for Ark's future. You right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to your regular art community news. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So Community Crunch 413 dropped late last night with initially a reminder on the very obvious though for some reason they can't announce it as that yet. Pera Rangers collaboration is coming to us and coming to us soon on the 17th of June in just over one week. Me personally I'm still convinced it's simply skins for pre-existing creatures though I want to make sure I get myself a Green Ranger costume though right? But this certainly spells perhaps a little concern with what once I perhaps thought was going to be a free update. Well, is this going to be dropped with a price tag? Seeing that recent developments have certainly changed a perspective on what DLC looks like for Ark. After we got a wonderful introduction trailer to the ASA version of the center, of which I genuinely do think it looks absolutely gorgeous, in places a lot of areas remodeled the term uplift glow up certainly applies to a lot of areas here especially the underworld in particular i think this looks absolutely fantastic however there are a lot of mixed responses on this losing some character feeling well kind of limited in terrain textures especially volcano island that's lost its well black sands appeal doesn't feel very lavery at all and burnt trees are a thing of the past kind of gutted they got rid of that one and perhaps too many jokes that I've noticed of it feeling a bit like Mexico in particular one thing I was certainly really bugged about was the western sea the western cliffside bottom of the sea level there well it's as barren and underdeveloped as it was on ASE I thought this would have been a great opportunity to have a look at that and get that area in particular revived I talked about this for many many weeks and it's exactly the same it's still underdeveloped and still a bit weird and a bit jarring to have an invisible floor that does nothing at all and while mesh holes <laughs> the least said the better there I think good grief there's perhaps bigger wider many more mesh holes with this map than I can remember in certainly the last previous ones that have dropped. Though Wildcard have addressed this with plans to fix for polish and level design, so perhaps these criticisms are being noted and maybe even the map in itself may be developed even further as time ticks on following the feedback. And well, co-founder Jeremy just announced on Twitter a few hours ago that Ark Survival Ascended is getting a giant upgrade to Unreal Engine 5.4 happening imminently over the summer with major improvements to performance, memory and graphical features. Unreal had a recent showcase on what 5.4 actually means for games in the future and there's a few things coming on top of a load of productivity boosts for quicker turnarounds, huge improvements to animations and how skeletons work with Unreal recently showcasing a pretty cool use of motion capture advancements. Rendering to improve stability, reduce ghosting, a big thing, a big issue I've seen with Arc Ascended since its launch. And more modes to fine tune performance including 60Hz. With the tail end of the showcase explaining there's going to be some improvements in AI and machine learning. Now I know a lot of people out there when they hear the word AI they start groaning and got to groan with you a little bit because NVIDIA, the chipset foundation most PCs run Arc on dropped a recent announcement that AI assistants are to take over with in-app-like experiences specifically showcasing and using Arc as a prime example, allowing inbuilt tutorials to help players learn through assisted guides on the fly. So Arc videos like mine could be a thing of the past. <laughs> but then again, advice like saying a spear is the best early weapon, well, maybe not. But hey, Ark is a complex game. If there's any game to demonstrate why this thing could work very well for games in the future supported by Nvidia, Ark's definitely the way to go. Though how does this help console as Nvidia doesn't support console? Don't know. I think perhaps this will be a PC only experience. Anyway, we're sidetracking a little there, but yeah, after the trailer was released for the center, well, it turns out the leak from Noise was indeed true. Pyromane got announced, got revealed at 
the time of launch of Centre and, well, as wildcards say, dropped as a new paid DLC to introduce new fantasy creatures into the world of Ark, and they're excited to launch this series with the Pyromane. Unsurprisingly, I guess they saved this until launch, because imagine if this was announced prior to launch, I could see the outrage this would have caused. Certainly magnified tenfold as opposed to dropping it in with the excitement of playing this new map, alleviating perhaps a lot of concerns a lot of people out there have, well, including myself. See, the community are very, very split at the moment. I see all of your comments surrounding this and on one hand pve or single player what's not to love you've got a brand new creature that doesn't affect you in any way or any form you can choose to pay for this and support wildcard or not you, you the option is simply yours to pick maybe slightly a bit irking having a creature roaming around that you can't interact with until you pay for it but not really the end of the world and Let's face it, it's got a lot of cool abilities, which we'll get to in just a moment. But PvP, fact is, it's a seriously competitive time. It's a permanent shoulder-mounted flamethrower, of, of which a weapon that's already overpowered in itself. But furthermore, supersedes quite a few go-to creatures, such as otters. This thing offers insulation against cold that was the thing otters did yes i know they've got the artifact thing on top but that's made them a little bit non-existent the phoenix and all of the flame attacking abilities that offers kind of really supersedes that one too and well almost every land travel tame it turns on a dime at a whim it's pretty rapid there's not much else you're going to want to use for adventuring on the ark and let's not forget in the future we'll make things like magma saw egg running a heck of a lot easier when that arrives and lest we forget as tested we did a vid that makes tech cave an absolute cakewalk now it's nothing new with later editions being better go-to creatures with devs wanting to push the boundaries on exciting new creatures we've seen this with every single map that's arrived but this one is locked behind a paywall. Spawning wild and center and scorched earth, the second creature you can visibly see on a map but not tame until paid for, that alone spells concerns. The Adventure Bob pack felt like a much easier one to swallow with the Oasis saw feeling much better balanced in terms of offering. And well, on that subject, we've already prepaid for exclusive dinos in a season pass on top of the season pass that's the game in itself awaiting the maps to be added over the next year or so, including a third revenue stream whilst perhaps answering the issues we had of prepaying for dinos. Dropping after that second revenue stream had been launched simply just feels greedy. Following a time before in ASC where new maps meant new creatures included, the future really does feel even more concerning. But what could this turn into? The devs explain that they recognize this as a solo paid creature and a new territory for Ark, with it helping the support and development and operation of Ark Survival Ascended. And look, I'm happy to support the devs. I want to support the devs. I want Ark's future to be as prosperous as it possibly can. I'm right behind it in any way I can. Obviously, right, this channel speaks for itself. But what the hell? <laughs> like, don't forget. There's a fourth revenue stream in the form of a cut from paid mods. And the jump from simple paid expansion season passes in ASE's lifetime to a growing monopoly feels like a case of too much too soon. I mean, perhaps something's going on that's pretty concerning at Studio Wildcard. We know recently some redundancies were made and perhaps they're really in the hole worse than we thought, though sales figures seem to suggest otherwise. And I'm sure Arc 2's development hell needs all the funding it can. But there could have been more options. MTX skins, we were happy to pay for these. We all openly said MTX skins, skins that bear no relevance on abilities or gameplay changing things within the game. Do them, offer them to us, put a price tag on those. We've been saying that for years now. And it seemed like fair enough, wildcard with dead against MTX. Okay, cool. But this is now a thing you've got even worse than MTX, you've got full-blown exclusive paid-for dinos that are within the actual game that you can't even tame until you pay for them. It's look, listen, listen to those words. It sounds wrong. It really does. I mean, hey, you know, official players, hopefully all your concerns about this 
$5 lion has been squashed with permanent 3x rates every weekend through June in celebration of Pride with associated colours from dark violet to medium lavender and unofficial servers you can use this by using the launch parameters hyphen Pride colours. But this singular $5 dino benchmarks perhaps the worst is yet to come. Imagine with the next maps that launch, three, four, five dinos, each asking for $5 before you can tame them. Could it spell paywall items next? $5 tech weapons, anyone? Like, what happened to Wildcard refusing to add the tech drill, if, lest you forget a planned item that publishers now wanted to include to be paid for to continue fueling for in gaining element? And still don't forget, the game's in early access. <laughs> It's too much. It's too much wildcard. Too soon. I mean, speaking of sales, Conquest servers are coming, but I don't even want to touch that one with anyone's right now. The fact is, the concern is, if these practices continue, the charm and the wonder of Ark is going to be blinded by what feels like a mobile app-like paywall fest. And I'm really concerned. I'm really concerned what this spells for the future. Yeah, the one-off. Yeah, not too big of a problem, but you're catering for PvP as well as PvE. And that's the problem right there. PvE players, I'm sure, and I'm with you there. No problem. I've, I'm happy to pay the $5 for it as a one-off for every other mod map that launches. I'm assuming that's their plan seeing that the Bob's Adventure Pack will be tied with the story maps. It's going to alternate between that and these. These mod maps, when they drop, you get these $5 Fantastic Beasts. But I know PvPers like to complain. They do. But this one, the Oasis sort felt at least a bit fairer in that, you know, it didn't have as many abilities on top. But this thing, there feels like a huge advantage with the fire-based abilities this offers and really does spell concerns for if we accept this, what's, what's the next step? What's going to be coming after this? Is the game going to be diluted by in-app purchases before you can access a tech cave? $5, please, before you come and join this tech cave. Singular purchases such as this could really spell a huge concern for Ark's future, especially PvP. It's not fair for PvP. It's not. If you're playing official PvP, don't. Honestly, don't. With this thing in there, don't. I don't think it's fair at all. And yet we said with Bob's Adventure Pack, like, prepaying for stuff that hasn't arrived yet feels a bit irking. You could have perhaps just dropped the dinos by themselves, and that's simply what they've done in response. But you've already done that. You've already got the season pass now. You can't do that afterwards. I don't know, man. New creature is new creature, but good grief. We came from a time where new creature would never have been associated with a prize tag. There's too many revenue streams, and it's too much too soon. Really please consider how you approach this in the future. Official PvP. I don't know what to say for you guys. I feel real bad for you guys, especially, honestly. This spells a perhaps dark future. And hopefully, Wildcard may recognise the feedback that's been given to them. Things like the Shastasaurus, absolutely fantastical creature. It really is. They've done an absolutely wonderful job with that. This thing, it feels rushed. It does feel rushed. It feels like somebody has gone, Ugh, we need something to earn us money because give us money. Something feels just a little bit sinister about this. It does. And there you go. That's my genuine thoughts and feelings. I know, right? What's going on? Ras Clark is hating on Wildcard. I'm not. Look, listen, I love this game. You know I love this game. But I think criticism needs to be offered where applicable and... It definitely is applicable with this. There's other revenue streams. If you really need other revenue streams, there's other ways to do this and not in a game that offers PvP, lock off paywalled creatures. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, uh, peace out. Uh.